What's happening guys? It's Shane here again and today we are going to be ranking the top eight STEM degrees. Now I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit busy this evening and so I'm going to get right into it. We're going to start off right away with the first one on the list and that is going to be number eight, biochemistry. Okay, this is a pretty good science degree. There's a lot of different paths you can go down. It makes a really good pre-medical or pre-health career type of degree. So for instance, you might get a biochemistry degree and then become a doctor. You could also become a biochemist. You could go into pharmaceutical sciences. You could go into the biotechnology industry. There's a lot of opportunity there. This one is just pretty solid, especially when you're talking about a science degree. It's definitely gonna be better than just biology or chemistry on its own. Number seven on the list, is going to be another physical science degree and that is physics. Now this might be the most difficult degree you can possibly get. It's definitely up there with some of the engineering degrees. I did rank at number one just because of the fact that the average person who graduates with a physics degree is pretty much a borderline genius. But the problem with getting just a physics bachelor degree is it's a little bit less practical than some other degrees on the list. So it might be a little bit of trouble getting your foot in the door if you just have a bachelor's degree and you don't go on to get a master's or a doctorate. However, once you get your first job, you get your foot in the door, you get some work experience, it's going to be much easier for you after that. And on top of that, a lot of companies have the hiring philosophy where they basically just want to hire the smartest possible people, right? So they don't care as much about the skills that you currently have. They care more about how you've demonstrated that you can learn new things pretty quickly. And that's something that physics grads can definitely do. And so they'll hire people purely for brain power and then they'll train them later on what they want them to do specifically. And this is very common. You see it a lot in the technology industry and finance as well. Next one on the list is going to be a degree that leads to a very specific career. And that that is actuarial science. You would get this degree in order to become an actuary. Now, actuaries are paid extremely well. They make really good money. And basically their main job is they use mathematics and statistics in order to figure out risk, right? And calculating risk can be applied to so many different things out there. For instance, the risk of giving somebody a loan. How likely is this person uh, going to be able to pay this loan back? How much should an insurance company charge for their monthly premiums? etc, etc, etc. There's so many different uses for these skills that an actuary learns. Now, when you look at the stats on this one, it's fantastic, really good pay, uh, good job opportunities. The only problem here is this is a degree that kind of pigeonholes you into one career. You could likely become an actuary just by getting a mathematics degree and then taking some extra actuary classes on the side. However, a mathematics degree would be much more flexible and that's why it is next on the list at number five. Now there are so many careers out there that require a decent level of mathematics skills. And so if you're somebody who's really good at math, that is gonna open up a lot of options for you. Now, one of the most common comments that I get on this channel is, Shane, what degrees should I go for if I'm not good at math? And I've made videos about that before and you know I'll probably make more videos about it in the future. So don't worry if you're somebody who's like a mathophobe, you really hate math, you just cannot stand it. But with that being said, when you look at the numbers, math mathematics degrees are pretty good. You're going to go into careers that tend to pay pretty high. A lot of people aren't good at math. And so that creates a natural barrier to entry. People that are good at math also tend to like math. So they go into careers where they're pretty happy. Now, one of the downsides to getting a mathematics degree, and this can vary depending on what university you go to, is that it, sometimes it can be a little bit intangible, right? So you're learning very important things, but it can be a little bit too theoretical and hard to apply to the real world. And so Again, you might have a little bit of trouble getting a job right off the bat. You're going to have to do a little more work than someone with like an engineering degree, for instance. But once you get your first job, you get some work experience, you're going to be good to go. Next one on the list is going to be a technology degree, which is information technology. And this one has several different variants to it. So for instance, you've got information technology, you've got information technology management. Most of the variants, when you look at the statistics, are really good. You've got high pay, extremely high demand. A lot of the time you're going to be getting jobs in the tech industry, which tends to have some of the highest job satisfaction out of all the different careers out there. It also just has a lot of opportunity in general. So not only moving up into higher positions, but sometimes you're able to start your own business. 
else. Now the one downside to technology related degrees, and this is sort of a downside but not really, is that sometimes you can get into uh, different technology related careers without getting a college degree, right? So that doesn't mean that getting a college degree is a scam by any means. I've heard people say that before. Oh, getting this is a scam. No, you're gonna get a good return on investment if you get a lot of these technology degrees. All I'm saying is in some cases, you are able to get into those same careers without getting a degree. Number three on the list is going to be statistics. And this is the type of math, in my opinion, that it's the most practical. It's very easy to apply statistics to the real world. And that's why it scores so high on this list. There's a lot of job opportunity out there and it's a little bit easier to see someone, you know, getting this skill set and then translating that into an employable skill that people are going to want to hire you for. And so for instance, someone might get a statistics degree and then go into data Data science, which is one of the hottest careers that you can possibly go into right now. So when you look at the statistics on this one, very good, lots of job opportunity. Um, you can go into a lot of different industries. It's relatively flexible, really solid option here, but not as good as the next one on the list, which is actually a bunch of different degrees. Uh, it would take up pretty much half or probably more than half of the list if I put all of them on here, but engineering degrees, right? So engineering is the old meta, in my opinion, right? It used to be probably the best degree that you could possibly get for the longest period of time. And when you look at the statistics, uh, for instance, the US Census over the last four 40 years or so, engineering degrees have outperformed every other type of degree by a mile. And I've talked about this in other videos extensively. You make more from engineering degrees over a lifetime. There's also more job opportunity. You can go into a bunch of different industries, so they're extremely flexible. There's just a lot of positives to getting an engineering degree. Now, they're still pretty good, but in my opinion, they aren't as good as they used to be. And there is a new meta, right? And the new meta is number one on the list. That is going to be... Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Computer science. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, so automation is coming. In fact, it's pretty much here. There's so many cool things going on out there that involve the skill of being able to program, being able to code. And so getting a computer science degree is going to teach you these skills and it just opens up a world of opportunity to you. There are very few skills out there that you can learn where it can leverage one person to do the work of a hundred people or a thousand people, right? There's not that many skills out there that you can learn that have the possibility of doing that. Marketing is one of those skills. If you get really good at marketing, you can leverage the work of one person, you know, do paid ads for instance, and uh, that can be leveraged into the work of like a hundred people or a thousand people. Another one that's a little more practical and there's more demand for it is computer science. Being able to code, create a piece of software that millions of people can use, create a website that millions of people can see. It's just incredible that one person can create something that can scale to thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions. And so pretty much any way you look at it, pretty much any way you cut it, this is the best skill that you could possibly learn. And it doesn't matter whether it comes down to getting a job, you can get a lot of fantastic jobs. These companies spoil their employees a lot of the time. And also starting a business. There's so much opportunity in the tech industry for starting businesses. You're gonna have a much better chance of success and if you are able to successfully start a business, it's probably going to be evaluated much higher than in other types of industries. So yeah, guys, this is my current 2021 updated list. Didn't really spend too much time going over the numbers because I've already done that so many times in other videos. All you gotta do is just watch my channel history, go back and watch a few videos and you'll know what the numbers are. But yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you haven't done it already, check out my other videos right here. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video, and I'll see you in the next one.